I am Drake. You're Drake. Yeah. Yeah. That's good for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best celebrity pranks. I'm feeling some tension between you and I, and I'm, I'm just, I'm just doing just... my job. For this list. We're continuing our celebration of above average celebrity pranksters. They can be targeting fellow celebrities, family, friends, fans, or the general public. Who would you like to see pranked next? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Nick Cannon and Kevin Hart Prank War. Save the drama for your llama. Happy birthday. This is from Nick Cannon. By this point, it seems that the battle between these two comedians is never gonna end. And to be honest, we're totally okay with that, especially if they keep upping the ante like this. The highlight undoubtedly came when Nick Cannon apparently snuck into the hangar where Kevin Hart's private plane was stored and dressed it up with promotional material for his upcoming show. Keep in mind, this is coming off the back of Cannon previously sending Hart a llama for his birthday. Uh, what are you asking what it is for? <laughs> Ain't about what it is, honey. Who in turn replied by posting Cannon's phone number on a billboard. They keep up this kind of trajectory, and Hart is likely to shoot Cannon with an actual Cannon next. Number 19, Roman Atwood TPs Howie Mandel. The number one pranker on YouTube. Howie Mandel has made this very clear. He loves pulling pranks, but he hates being the victim of one. Unfortunately for him, his own son has befriended one of the biggest practical jokers in the game, modern YouTube celebrity prankster Roman Atwood. Call it juvenile or immature, but TPing a house is a time-honored classic. Are you kidding me? That being said, few people have ever taken it to extreme. The admittedly impressive end result allegedly cost Howie $2,000 in cleanup. But hey, Mr. Mandel can likely afford it, and considering Roman had an accomplice on the inside, Mandel's son Alex, it's not like he's gonna press charges. What the hell happened? Oh my God. Number 18, Maisie Williams pranks Game of Thrones fans. Game of Thrones' Arya Stark is ruthless and wants her enemies dead. Maisie Williams is also ruthless, only she plies her trade in the pranking department. You want this one? This is you. No, I'm Lorraine. <laughs> what, you think I'm, I'm this? For this joke, which was done for Nylon Magazine, she pretends to be a store clerk at a hobby shop giving away free Game of Thrones merchandise. I know who you are. Oh. I was thinking that I recognized you. Where do I know you from? Nowhere. Have you been to England? Nope. Tinder? Nope. Without a disguise, avid fans quickly realize who she really is, but Williams is so committed to the bit, she never breaks character and starts to make them think otherwise. Here we have the mother of dragons and a dragon, read like a dragon. She tortures a stream of fans, making them act out scenes from the show and pretend to be dragons in order to earn their prizes. It's silly, foolish, and Williams clearly has so much fun with it. <laughs> perfect! It's, it's perfect! This is incredible. Number 17, Pitt versus Clooney prank war. We're like two nuclear superpowers. At this point, we shouldn't launch because we'll just annihilate each other. This is a battle of two diabolical minds. Brad Pitt and George Clooney are both notorious for their pranks. Why? Um, man, I, I, I need a psychologist to tell me why. <laughs> but they reserve their best for each other. Clooney has placed a few innocent bumper stickers on Pitt's car that read things like, small penis on board. He's also revealed that he had stationery made with Brad Pitt's name on it and sent fake letters to Meryl Streep. And I sent it to her with a note from Brad that said, you know, I hear you're gonna be doing the Iron Lady soon. <laughs> this guy helped me with my dialect in Troy or some of it. You know, here, I thought maybe this would help. And I sent it to Meryl and, you know, she's very confused. <laughs> Pitt, meanwhile, has taken out full ads for Clooney boasting about being the sexiest man alive and once tricked Italian film crew members into calling Clooney Mr. Ocean and avoiding eye contact with him. Those are just a few in this ongoing war we hope never ends. Brad got me pretty bad on one where he, you know, I think he, he was doing Letterman and Letterman asked him when he and Andrew were going to get married and he said when, you know, when George can legally marry in California. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Number 16, Smosh pranks colleague with Emma Watson interview. You wanna go and ask the first question? First question? As impossible as it may seem, Emma Watson may be even more impressive than Hermione Granger. She's incredibly talented, intelligent, classy, and a humanitarian. But her most impressive feat just might be the grace and compassion she displayed when made the unwitting accomplice to this cruel but funny prank during a Smosh interview. Hi! You see, Smosh Games co-host Joven has more than a little crush on Emma Watson. So, the Smosh team surprised him by prepping him to interview Logan Lerman, 
only to bring out Emma Watson instead. So what's it like being Percy Jackson? <laughs> She's an excellent sport, even calling his I heart Emma tattoo cute when she could have said creepy. It's people I want to meet list. <laughs> I'm on a list? You're on the list. Well, how far up on the list am I? Uh, number one. Number 15, Dominic Monaghan fake interviews Elijah Wood. Yes, we hear you. I actually, I actually worked with- Excuse um, me, I interrupt you. At least Emma Watson wasn't the butt end of her joke interview. Elijah Wood wasn't so lucky. When doing promotion for The Return of the King, he was subjected to an absolutely outlandish interview with a strange German man. There is a quote from Frodo. He says, In a world filled with mirth and magic, you lose time in yourself. You, you agree with this comment? In a, I, will in a... I will repeat it for you. Please. Elijah becomes increasingly more confused, uncomfortable, and generally bewildered as the interview progresses, and you can't help but feel for him as he attempts to treat the interview with respect and keep it on track. Little does he know it's his fellow on-screen hobbit Dominic Monaghan, faking an accent and asking him these odd questions. Do you kick balls? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Woods? By the end of the interview, Elijah is in absolute stitches. It's truly the DVD Easter egg special feature to rule them all. It is Dom Monaghan talking to you. Brilliant. How are you, mate? How are you? Mate? Are you? <laughs> Number 14, Jason Sudeikis makes friends with Jennifer Aniston. Not all pranks need to be uncomfortable. Sometimes they can be downright sweet. Don't change it, I love this song. During this comedy, there's a family for hire sing-along to the TLC classic Waterfalls. It's a pretty charming moment in the life of this drug smuggling faux family. As revealed by the closing credit outtakes, however, when you give Jason Sudeikis control of the radio, his song picks tend to deviate from the playlist. I've seen a rainbow yesterday, but too many storms have come. In a great example of onset trolling, he cranks the famous theme song from Friends, I'll Be There For You by the Rembrandts. His young co-stars Emma Roberts and Will Poulter get in on the fun. I'll be there for you. Leaving a bemused Jennifer Aniston shaking her head and glaring at the camera, then breaking into uncontrollable laughter. Number 13. Ashton Kutcher forecloses Justin Timberlake's home. Could you not step on my belongings, please? Really f it up, dude. Come on, you cannot make a list about celebrity pranks and not include the man who created Punked. I'm Agent Shepard, U.S. Tax Enforcement Agency. Hello. Uh, there's, uh, Lena's been placed against a lot of your possessions. We have some back taxes to the tune of $900,000. Ashton Kutcher has pulled off some superb deceptions across his career, but nothing beats the time he literally made Justin Timberlake cry a river. Can you step inside, please, for a minute? The house itself has been seized, so it's now property of the government. We can't go inside. And why wouldn't he get a little misty-eyed? He was convinced that the government was about to take away his house, his pets, and all his possessions. Now, the dogs are, are put in a government pound, and they'll be taken care of. You took my dogs? The fact that Dax Shepard was on hand dressed as an IRS agent with a moving van on standby added just enough realism to convince the singer he was about to lose everything. Are you guys moving or what? You're <laughs> <laughs> Number 12, Rihanna pranks Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel may be the late night king of pranks, but this time it's Rihanna who pulls a fast one on the funny man. All right. I'm gonna go on the couch, let's get. Let's get him back. Yeah, well, you did. In one of her finest performances, Rihanna sneaks into Kimmel's bedroom at one in the morning and, with the help of his own talk show crew, performs a live concert. Breaking the silence, Rihanna bursts into a rendition of her hit song, Bitch Better Have My Money, complete with a light show and confetti. She tortures Kimmel hitting him with pillows and flashing lights inches from his face, dragging him from his slumber. Kimmel's confused reaction is fantastic, as he takes it like a sport, but not before letting off an expletive or two. <laughs> Number 11, James Corden's statue prank on David Beckham. To celebrate his career with the galaxy, the team has built a brand new statue. Say what you will about James Corden, but he goes all out when it comes to trying to pull the rug out from beneath his celebrity guests. None more so than legendary footballer David Beckham. We want you to meet David Beckham. With Beckham blissfully unaware of the progress being made on the statue set to be unveiled in his honor, Corden decided to make a little mischief and had his prop department credit a less flattering version. When we spoke in Chicago, there was catching me in motion, but also making me, I mean, look at my chin. 
complete with a rhombus-shaped head and much wider backside. Look at my bum. Oh, yeah. my ass. Yeah, again, I'm telling you, that's in motion. That's how it looks. Beckham may be a superstar when it comes to playing the people's game, but he was pretty slow on the uptake when faced with such an obvious trick. <laughs> By the end, he was just happy to see the thing get smashed. Oh my god, what's happened? Hey, oh my <laughs> Number 10, Bill Hader Prank School. Human DVR. Oh. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Stefan. What are human DVR? A great comedian of the new generation, Bill Hader may have taken on his best role when he became Mike the Firefighter to prank a small New York high school. Red! <laughs> Come on! Donning a fake mustache, aviator glasses, and a full firefighter's jumpsuit, Hader spoke in classrooms and at an assembly, providing horrible safety tips and making kids stop, drop, and roll. Get on your feet, get on your feet, get on your feet, get on your feet. Stop, you're on fire. Drop, roll. This prank ended with a wonderful twist, as Hader was actually fulfilling a student's request through the Make-A-Wish Foundation to prank the school. I'm a really big fan. He's one of my favorite celebrities, Jesse St. Clemens. He's from the Red Lobster commercials. On the fly, Hader decided to dash the hopes of wise students by having a decoy actor stage a big reveal, before running out and surprising the school himself. And a super cool girl <laughs> named Ray. Words can't express my appreciation and gratitude and how grateful I am to Make-A-Wish and to Bill's team and the school and everything. Number nine, Ellen pranking all her guests. I was, I just well, was on my way, you know. Put your pants on and get out of the car. I had to do this change in the car and this cop pulled me over. If Jimmy Kimmel is the late night king of pranking, then Ellen was the daytime queen. She left no one unscathed, targeting celebrities that came on her show, but also using her guests to prank the unsuspecting general public. <laughs> Some favorites include her tradition of sending her producer to a haunted house and scaring Modern Family's Eric Stone Street, despite his best efforts to stay safe. And these two girls got up in the middle of my Q&A and, and left. And I have a microphone. Oh, you she sent stars like Sofia Vergara and Dennis Quaid out to the public with hidden earpieces, who would repeat word for word what she told them. Can I get some water? Dennis Quaid, Dennis Quaid wants water. Uh, can I get some water? Dennis Quaid wants water. Dennis Quaid wants water. She even had David Beckham make ridiculous requests of a massage therapist, and hid in Taylor Swift's dressing room to scare her. Famous or not, nobody is safe from the queen. <laughs> Number eight, Adele as Adele. Nice to meet you, Chevy. <gasps> That's so good. <laughs> you look so not like yourself. Teaming up with host Graham Norton, Adele went undercover as an Adele impersonator. Sporting a fake chin and nose, altering her voice, and donning the moniker Jenny, Adele assumed the identity of a simple nanny who doubles as an Adele impersonator. Also, my day job is I'm a nanny. So nannies talk very slow and very calm to try and make the world make sense. I guess you should go backstage and, and get ready for this. I'm gonna walk like this as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go like that. Hanging backstage with a bunch of fellow impersonators, Jenny makes fun of Adele for taking so long on her next album and complains about the lack of demand. Mine's been a bit slow recently, not that many. Oh, really? Yeah, not much of a demand. Jenny fits right in, and nobody suspects a thing. That is, until she steps up for her audition. I'm not feeling great. After faking a near-nervous breakdown, Adele breaks out her real, instantly recognizable voice, shattering the illusion and stunning the impersonators. When the rain is blowing in your face oh, And the whole world is on <laughs> It is emotional and beautiful as she makes their dreams come true. As soon as she opened her mouth, you could just... You can't mimic like that. It's just beautiful. 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 Number seven, Paul Rudd on Conan. Paul Rudd is one of America's most beloved funny men, mostly because of his goofy charisma. You are under arrest! No, I didn't steal anything. I was returning something I stole. It's that very quality that makes him such a talented prankster, as he always maintains a persona of innocent ignorance throughout his bits. No! No! I'm coming for you! you! Get you! While he tormented Jason Siegel throughout their I Love You Man tour, it's his running gag with Conan O'Brien that scores as Rudd's best prank. So let's take a look at this clip from the 40-year-old virgin. 
every time Rudd would promote a new movie on Conan's show, he had the host introduce a clip from the upcoming film. But rather than cutting to the expected clip, Rudd would show a scene from the 1988 E.T. ripoff, Mac and Me. And you promised me you're not going to show it again, and you show it again. Oh, get it out there. All right, all right. But I actually did have the act. You do have yes. one. Okay, let's take a look. Without fail, Rudd always played it cool, while Conan was caught once again. This is maybe the tenth time you've done this to us. <laughs> this seems to be your favorite thing to do is to set up a, a clip from one of your movies, and then we show that clip, which is unforgettable, by the way. Number six, Jackass abducts Brad Pitt. What's more surprising than finding Brad Pitt at a hot dog joint? Seeing a van full of men show up in masks and forcefully shove him into their vehicle and drive off. That's exactly what people witnessed one fateful night while waiting in line at Pink's Hot Dogs. Hi, I'm Brad Pitt, and I'm gonna get abducted. By this point, Jackass was on its third season, and had been a huge hit for MTV. When Johnny Knoxville had a chance encounter with Brad at Spike Jonze's house, the famous actor expressed his interest in making a guest appearance. Yo, Brad Pitt! No s***! No s***! No Brad Pitt, dude! Right, 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 right. The skit was less than a minute long, but talk about a prank with a heavy impact. The bystanders freeze up as the frantic celebrity is dragged away screaming for help. help! 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 <laughs> Number 5. Arnold Schwarzenegger pranks wax museum goers. You have elbows and you have knees, so touch them. Very nice. The governator has pulled off a few pranks in his day, like when he pretended to be a gym trainer in the name of charity. When it burns, it grows. Remember that. <laughs> Maybe you saw me on the FBI Most Wanted list. This time, raising money for after-school programs, Schwarzenegger went back in the makeup chair to suit up as his most famous character, Model T-800, the Terminator. Get out. <laughs> Just joking. First, he enjoyed walking the streets of LA, spitting classic lines from the franchise at tourists, and even having a showdown with an Arnold impersonator. Who are you? <laughs> I'm the Terminator. Who are you? I'm the Terminator. I'm the T-800. The real comedy gold comes at Madame Tussauds' Wax Museum, where he pretends to be a wax statue before coming to life and terrifying unsuspecting museum goers. You look real. Because I am. <laughs> he has a great time, and all for a good cause. No touching. Ah! <laughs> Let me hold you. You want to come in and shoot in shot? Oh my God. Number 4. Sasha Baron Cohen Pushes Old Lady Off the Stage Very nice! Right. Borat proved Sasha Baron Cohen fully commits to whatever ludicrous stunt he's pulling, and this is no exception. For this prank, when he's awarded the Charlie Chaplin Award for Excellence in Comedy at the Britannia Awards, the presenter, a kind old woman, gives Cohen the actual cane from Chaplin's film City Lights. Cohen graciously accepts, but things go south when, in the middle of an impersonation of Chaplin's dancing, the cane snaps, and Cohen pushes the presenter off the stage. Cohen tries to revive the woman as she's lying lifeless on the ground before he gives up and returns to his acceptance speech. Grace Cullington is the oldest, um, sorry, was the oldest surviving actor to work with Chaplin. The crowd goes from horrified murmurs to laughter when they realize Cohen has pulled yet another one of his signature tricks on them. On the bright side, what a great way to go. Number three, Jennifer Lawrence pranks the pranksters. Oh my god, I was about to cry. You guys got me so good. Are you ready for prankception? Back when Smosh was interviewing celebrities, the usual formula involved Anthony feeding Ian funny quips and awkward acts to perform. Only this time, J-Law was ready. Because it's always catching fire. This is a horrible interview. My friend lost a house in one of the California fires. Oh no! Okay, sensitive. so rough, rough subject then. Behind the scenes, they had a fellow Smosh fan feeding her info to throw Ian off his game. I thought, I thought I'd give it, a, give it a shot. Are you high? Am I high? I, I hope not. Kudos to Ian for holding his own and pressing forward, because Lawrence was brutal with her barbs. But what else do you expect from an Oscar-winning actress? I just feel like this is like a waste of everybody's time. I'm sorry. I feel like you're not really a professional. 
We're honestly shocked he didn't run for the hills when Liam Hemsworth and Josh Hutcherson came in at the end, pretending like they were about to throw down. Who was the interviewer? Hmm? Who was the interviewer? I was. You were doing the interview? Yes. What, what happened, Brad? Number two, fake Drake. Yeah, how's that going, Captain Romance? A quick throwback to Drake's Degrassi days reminds us that he has at least some acting chops. In this sketch for Jimmy Kimmel Live, he employs them as he goes undercover to interview random people on the street. The topic of conversation? Drake himself. While he does receive a lot of love, the rapper is also known to take a lot of heat. Do you feel any way about Drake crying at the ESPYs? Is that, like, not manly? Definitely not manly. I'd say he's, uh, a ch chicken head. Steering into the skid, Drake encourages his interviewees to diss him by cooking up outrageous fake stories about his ESPYs hosting and shenanigans at live performances. I'm Drake, so what would I would say to myself? What would you say to yourself? Huh? What would you say to yourself? What would I say to myself? Because I'm Drake, so I would say, what would I say to myself? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Yes. I'm an idiot. I'm a total idiot. I am a total idiot. He's quick on his feet and smart with his own disses, proving just how multi-talented he really is. The final reveal is brilliant, leaving one streetgoer absolutely stunned. I go to sleep with a suitcase. And, oh my God! <laughs> yes. <laughs> that just happened. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Jimmy Kimmel vs. Emily Blunt and John Krasinski Oh no. Jimmy Kimmel is the undisputed king of late-night television pranks, but he may have met his match in celebrity powerhouse couple John Krasinski and Emily Blunt. The couple fired the opening shot years ago when they broke into his house and decorated it with holiday lawn ornaments. Since then, this good-spirited war has gone nuclear. Come on! Real-life reindeer poop, office redecorating, gift-wrapped homes, and zombies have all been deployed. I have to hand it to you, that is very impressive. In 2014, Krasinski and Blunt presented Kimmel with three nights of prank mess, ending with the destruction of Jimmy's car. Kids don't need my computer! Oh, no. Well, Jimmy got even by organizing an unsanctioned Krasinski family yard sale, with just a splash of eggnog for good measure. We guess there's a little Jim Halpert in all of us. Oh, and I have one other thing for you also, what? one other little surprise. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.